This is a patron powered video. Actually, it's a you powered video too. If you went to my Instagram, which by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, it's cheap audio man on Instagram, instagram.com slash cheap audio man or at cheap audio man. I put up pictures and stuff. Anyway, I asked you and my patrons for some hot takes on audio. Maybe something controversial or divisive. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee and let's talk about some hot takes. Our first hot take comes from Matthew Williams. Matt says, I've been dealing with what I call conflict of equipment status or prestige. With your help and the Cam Brotherhood, I've spent less and gotten better sound quality for less money than ever before. It's just that when you tell a fellow audio aficionado that a modified IEMA A07 paired with a decent Rotel preamp can give you very good to excellent sound, they dismiss you as uninformed and misled by me if it's not a class a b amp it's no good i guess i call it class d bias i guess i could call it audiophile snobbery your thoughts well i think if somebody hasn't experienced something and they have a preconceived idea i think that's called contempt prior to investigation for me personally if you enjoy the way it sounds then that's all that matters and if you've had experience with higher end stuff and you prefer the sound of what you have then that's all that matters. I know if you do an op amp upgrade and a power supply upgrade to one that's not noisy, I know the 48 volt 10 amp power supply that I had, had a, which was a bit distracting in between tracks. But there's been things that have happened in other industries to where people have hated it. Heck, people used to hate Japanese made receivers. They thought they were garbage. So ideas come around. I don't think ideas will ever quite come around for a certain segment of our hobby when it comes to less expensive products, I think there's always going to be a stigma. And to be fair, there is a lot of garbage out there, but there are some diamonds in the rough, including the IEMA A07, including the Fozzy Audio TB10D, including the Fozzy Audio BT28 Pro. There are some good ones out there, and if it works in your system and you enjoy it, don't go letting anybody tell you that you're wrong, because you're not gonna convince them. And obviously they're not gonna convince you because you've heard it. Thank you, Matthew. If you wanna see more free content like this, please like this video. Maybe even send it to a friend that you think may enjoy it. If you're new here, please also consider subscribing. I do this for a living, so it means the world to me if you like this video, maybe share it out with a friend and subscribe. You can always unsubscribe. People do it all the time. Brandon Winstead. Brandon says, not to sound like an old geezer, and say kids these days. I say that all the time, I was saying it last night. Insert complaint. But I don't see a lot of younger people getting into hi-fi these days. Sure, they like music, but they don't seem to really care about the quality of the sound. Maybe it's something they will grow into. I think um, I agree with this, and I blame the manufacturers. I was actually having a conversation with Jason Stoddard from Schert down in Corpus Christi, and we were talking about his conversation that he had had with other hi-fi manufacturers. And they were saying, we can't get any young kids into this hobby. We can't get younger people into the hobby. And Jason said, yeah, it's because your stuff is so expensive. And they said, what are you talking about? Our stuff is affordable, it's high value. It's less than $5,000. But I think that's the mentality for some products out there. I think the other issue is kids didn't grow up like we did if you're in your 40s or 50s. Kids didn't grow up seeing what a hi-fi system looked like. Some of my kids were born in the late 90s, early 2000s, and outside of my house, they never saw a stereo. And most of the time, even at my house, it was a home theater. So there wasn't a lot of examples of two-channel listening for a certain generation of people. But I also think it comes down to marketing. You know who markets the heck out of young people? Crappy Bluetooth headphone manufacturers. And I'm not saying all Bluetooth headphones are crappy. I'm saying like Skull Candy. And a lot of these companies that don't really care about sound, they market to the kids. So I think it's a pricing and a marketing issue. But 
what we can all do as Gideons of this hobby is to take a young kid, just, just kidding, is to talk to younger kids and tell them what you do. If you know them, I guess it would be a little bit strange if you went up to a stranger on the street and start waxing poetic about hi-fi. So don't do that. <laughs> but what you could do is if your buddy's kid is sitting there and talking, you could ask them what type of music they listen to and then ask them what type of system they listen to. And then just tell them about the hobby. <laughs> but... But please don't go seeking out strangers. There's a whole generation of kids that didn't see it. There's a whole bunch of companies that aren't marketing to younger kids. And there's a whole bunch of companies that the stuff is just too expensive. The stuff that is affordable too, I don't even think they understand how to market outside of YouTube. And my audience is definitely not a younger audience. There's some young kids that watch it, but not a ton. <laughs> From Instagram, he, I assume it's a he, says vintage realistic receivers and speakers are great. That's his hot take. And then somebody else said, this is not a hot take, but truth. I agree with you, evil buddy, for the only fact that that was my first receiver. Little 12 watt realistic receiver. Now, I've actually been able to buy some vintage receivers and people may question whether or not they're vintage receivers because the two that I like the most are post-1980, at 1980, all the way up to 1986, but they both sound a great, great. One of them puts out 100 watts a channel, and I believe that power rating. They have cool VU meters, although they're digital. Two phono stages, and a mid-range control. What? That's right, mid-range control, which is awesome. And of course, they have a loudness button. I think they sound better. This is gonna be a hot take. I think my realistic 2000 SDA 2000 series sound better than my Yamaha CR800, which sounds great. Doesn't sound as dynamic as my realistic stuff though. I also have some Minimus speakers that were very generously sent to me by one of my patrons. I used to walk by those Minimus speakers all the time. Never got them back then, but I got them today and guess what? They sound pretty good. They're a sealed, tiny little speaker. They're built great, big tweeter, and they still hit probably 90 hertz. They are great for surrounds. I use them for upward firing Atmos speakers. There is nothing wrong with realistic receivers. Quite frankly, the ST2000, ST2270, STA2500, if you can find one of those, it is one of the last awesome deals in vintage receivers. And for whatever reason, I don't have any of the issues with those that I do with my 70s era receivers. Arr, arr, arr. So vintage realistic sounds awesome. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Another one from Instagram. Headphones, this is from Hooper did. Hooper did. Headphones outperform speakers at a fraction of the price. Whew, this is a hot take. I actually agree. In certain aspects, for detail resolution, absolutely. But if you look at a headphone response curve, even if it adheres to the Mark Harmon curve, there's still dips in that frequency response. Now it may be different because it's right on your ears, but unless it's in your ears, it's not using your ear canal as part of the enclosure. Almost all headphone frequency responses that I've seen kind of go whoop de doop de doo So they're not a flat frequency response. And that's why headphone enthusiasts rarely own one pair of headphones. They generally own 10 pair of headphones because with that variability, there is a different sonic characteristic. Most speakers are manufactured to have pretty much a flat, pretty much a flat frequency response. But one thing you will never get out of headphones that you'll get out of speakers is soundstage and imaging. You will get soundstage and imaging from a headphone, but it is really different. If you are only after detail resolution and maybe, maybe instrument separation, I could agree with that. If you're after the whole enchilada though and soundstage and imaging and palpable bases, is your goal, then I don't think headphones are gonna cut it. Now with that said, most of my personal listening is done through headphones and I enjoy headphones a great deal. I can see where you're coming from on this one, but I don't necessarily agree with the whole thing. Personally, I think if you're into music, then you're doing yourself a disservice if you only listen to speakers or you only listen to headphones. If your budget allows, I think everybody should have a decent little speaker setup 
and a decent little headphone setup. Then you can enjoy the best of both worlds. Craig Kohler said AVRs are underrated and or shunned by stereo audio enthusiasts, and I don't know why. I started my recent two channel audio journey with standard two channel amps, but ended up with an AVR I really enjoy and the quality of life improvements, quality of life improvements is way outweighed by any possible differences in audio quality. Well, there you go. As long as you like it and it makes you happy. If it makes you happy, it's not really bad. <laughs> then you should stick with an AVR. I've listened to a lot of stuff. I've listened to a lot of two channel amplifiers. I've listened to a lot of home theater amplifiers. And I will say, generally speaking, I prefer the sound. If I'm painting with broad strokes, I prefer the sound of a dedicated two channel amplifier better. However, there are a few AVRs that I've been blown away by. The Pioneer VLX VX305 while running Dirac and then me tweaking some of the EQ settings, sounds amazing. The Marantz NR1711, although I had some HDMI issues, sounds amazing for music. Frankly, I thought it sounded marginally not quite as good as a Moon by Sema Audio. I something or other, which was a $4,000 two channel amp. And I thought the Marantz was not embarrassed by it. And finally, the Emotiva MR1, I think sounds lights out for music. So if you get the right receiver, then I wholeheartedly agree with you. We don't need a separate two channel system. But if you're not into tweaking, some of these receivers need a bit of tweaking to get them sounding really, really good for two channel listening. <laughs> Another one from Instagram, this will probably be our last one of the day, the magic underscore Marty. Dolby Atmos is better than two channel for music. Two channel is always talking about center imaging and soundstage while Atmos has actual multi-speaker soundstage and an actual center channel. I actually agree with this. Now, this is gonna be a hot take. People aren't probably gonna like this. I agree. If the recording is done well, and if your system is set up perfectly, I think absolutely 100% correct. The problem is a lot of the Dolby Atmos music isn't great. And people often don't have their system set up perfectly. I will say not even using Atmos, I used Dolby Music, and then I just tweaked the levels myself to get it where I was at. And I was only listening to a PCM or two channel recording. Even with that, I got an amazing immersive experience that felt very realistic. Listening to Korn, the MTV Unplugged record. What I personally think is happening is people don't want to change. There's always different music formats coming out, Dolby Music. DVD music or whatever it was, SACD, if it had a five channel mix. I think the better question to ask is, are artists, are record labels going to be recording records or tracks in a multi-channel format? And if that's really gonna catch on, because I don't know if it is. If it does, then I absolutely agree that you are correct, sir. Don't know if it's gonna catch on though. Two channel music is here to say it's proven itself. It's not going anywhere. We've had quad, we've had Dolby, I think, five channel. There have been multi-channel formats that have kind of come and they've gone. PCM has always been here, except for when it was mono. So I hope it does catch on because I would love to be able to listen to that. And that ties back into the previous question or the previous hot take. Either way, absolutely, there's music mastered in Dolby Atmos. Why? The new Metallica record came out and I cannot wait to listen to it in Dolby Atmos. I've been listening to it just headphones and in my car on my stereo here in two channel, but I wanna hear what all the fuss is about. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to put a system back together because I just took down my Dolby Atmos system in lieu of powered speakers, the Klipsch. And if you haven't seen the Klipsch video, I'll put it right here, Klipsch the nines. Well, that was fun. Thank you everybody that commented on my Instagram and commented in my Patreon community. And if you think you got a hot take that I didn't mention here, put it down in the comments. 
So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms, patron only Discord, patron only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music, Rune, or Tidal. Links in the description. Click sign up. They have a trial. Even if you quit, though, I get a couple of dollars. You can also use the links in the description for products. Most of those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through anything you have. Home theater, AVR receiver, two channel, headphones, it doesn't matter. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy.